This is a quick video over the combination of Q-Line and Q-Line and X to Y diagrams. And the, first, the first thing I want to do is, is show what really the Q-Line was. So we said that Y-A was equal to V over F minus 1 is all over V over F times XA plus 1 over V over F times ZA. And remember, ZA is the total fraction of A going into the system. So let's say so this is F, and we separate it to a vapor and to a liquid. The Z represents the mole fraction of A going in, so ZA. So that's going in, and then uh, YA, YA represents the mole fraction of A going out with the vapor, and XA represents the mole fraction going out the liquid, or the mole fraction of the liquid going out. That's what those mean. And we also remember an XY diagram. Oops, maybe a little better. It is the mole fraction of the liquid versus the mole fraction in the vapor from 0 to 1. And of course this is the more volatile liquid because it is concave up and not concave down. If it was the less volatile it would be concave down. And you could still use a chart. It's just it would kind of be almost reverse but a little different. And we can actually see that we have a YA and XA and ZA. This right here is constant. So if we wanted to say we wanted to maybe make if we wanted to vaporize a third of the system then V over F is just equal to 1 over 3. V over F is equal to 1 over 3. And all that means is for every one mole that goes out, two moles go out on the bottom. So three moles go in. That's that's all it's saying right there. So we're going to vaporize it. And I mean, you could actually have a vapor and a liquid still going in and still vaporize 3%, 3, have a uh, vaporize a third of it. That's supposed to be one over three. Sorry. So that's you can you can when you're wanting to vaporize something you can still do it that way. Anyway, we'll go back to this. So ZA is just the total mole fraction of A going into the system, and if the uh, mole fractions of the vapor and liquid were equal, we could actually put ZA on this plot. So what we'll do is we'll say that the mole fractions in the vapor and liquid are equal to each other. So now we can go from XA, and I'll start off at 0.5 or something. So we'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, and we said that, let's say that the moles going into the system are ZA is equal to 0 0.5. So a, a fifth of the of the feed is of A. So we're just going to go up. We're going to mark that point. We're going to forget about that point for just a moment. Now we have Z plotted, and we know what Z is. So then now this is a constant. So that's constant. So that's just maybe C. And then we have Y times some other constant times a variable X. So we're going to plot that on this graph. And that will give us, with saying that the we want to vaporize a third of it, so that is just actually YA is equal to 1 over 3 minus 1 over 1 over 3 XA plus 3, because that's just 1 over 1 over 3 times ZA, and that ZA is just 0.5, so then YA simplifies to... Um, 
negative two negative two x a plus three times point five one point five. If I'm doing everything correct, I might not be. I think I am though. So when y is zero or when uh, x is zero, which is right here, when x a is zero, y is equal to 1.5. So that's way up here. Like right there. Off the chart. Might be a little lower, but it's it's up there. And when y is zero, then zero is equal to negative 2xa plus 1.5. We're going to transfer the xa, so we have 2xa is equal to 1.5 divided by 2. And that's equal to um, 3 over 4, which is equal to 0 0.75. So then we can just go to 60, 70, 80, 90. It's right there, so then that point is right there. So we'll, remember the Q line is basically the uh, the mass uh, the material balance equation. What goes in must come out. That's all it's saying. So if we're vaporizing a, vaporizing a third of it, then it must be on this line. And I'm going to try to draw this line as straight as possible. I may not be able to. And we notice that the line actually passes through this point right here. So that's the important thing. is If you can't draw this line up here, you can just draw it right here on this y, where this is again, y a is equal to b, or x a. So that, that passes on the line, that's something very useful. Remember that is just z a, and we said that was 0.5. But the really important thing is, is that it passes right here. And that means that not only does it the material balance fit, where what goes in, or mass transfer, I th material balance or whatever it is, matches the, uh, matches also the vapor equilibrium line, which is basically what this line is. Only there at, I don't know what that is, is, so we'll say that this is maybe, uh, y1 and this is x1 that means that the vapor has a let's just do it real quick so that's 0.5 so that's be about 0.5 so maybe that's 0 0.6 that's 0 0.6 and this might be 0 0.4 0 0.4 so then we know that the liquid liquid has a mole fraction of a of a mole fraction of a of <laughs> 0 0.4 and the vapor vapor has a mole fraction mole or the, yeah mole fraction of 0 0.6 so when we want to vaporize a third of it the only place that can happen is when the vapor has a uh, mole fraction of, or the liquid has a mole fraction of 0.4 and the vapor has a mole fraction of 0.6. And remember, that happens at one temperature, one unique temperature. And because remember, this line is for different temperatures. Each, part, each one of these parts have many, many different temperatures. And usually it uh, goes from a maybe hundred to maybe two hundred it just it, there it's it's not like from zero to a zero or at zero Kelvin to 300 Kelvin it's a narrow range of temperatures it might only be 98 to a hundred Kelvin depending on or a hundred Celsius depending on what the material is And there'll be more on the next video.